They're owned by the Federal Reserve. That means they're owned by the 13 banking families that did their deeds in 1913 on Jekyll Island. They own it all. Hello, you are live on Marfugal TV. What's going on? Hey, Marf, it's Mountain Man. Hey, what's going on? So, uh, let's see no. here. You're uh, calling about uh, recent solar winds and blows transformers and EMP CME protection. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, when I called the last show, you know, I postulated that, you know, these, uh, the seven day, you know, brownout you know, rolling blackouts were because this um, stratosphere, um, the ozone layer in the stratosphere, which is allowing the UVC rays to be recorded on Earth. And my source for that is Mr. MBB333. So I'm glad to hear that you're hooking up with him because I've watched his videos. He basically gave meters to people in different parts of the U.S. and Canada. And they just, you know, turn the meter on and, you know, read what's on the ground. So... Um, we recently just had a storm in the Northeast, and during the storm, 70-mile-an-hour winds, three and a half inches of rain here where I am in Vermont, and the storm came across the country. In other words, on the East Coast, for us to get a storm of that power, it has to be either a hurricane remnant, tropical storm remnant that comes up the coast, or a storm that comes directly across the country and then reforms off of the East Coast, taking all the power of the Atlantic Ocean and blasting us. That's how we get storms of that magnitude. This was neither. This was the remnant of the Colorado storm that I was talking about when I called the week ago, and it came to the east and dumped three and a half inches of rain. So my point is, is that this you know, lack of stratosphere, lack of ozone layer is allowing solar winds to come in. Inside the solar winds, and it's, it's called ionization or plasma, is the electromagnetic pulse that everyone is protecting against. They're obviously going to create a fake boogeyman. That's what they always do. You know, someone's going to, you know, have an EMP bomb. But that's not what it is. It's coming from the weather and this red thing, you know, planet, energy mass, whatever you want to call it, that's getting closer. And as I told you, November 18th, is when we this thing gets the closest to us. So to me, it's only going to get worse between now and November 18th. And so, boom, I told you in the last call that as I'm driving in Vermont, I see brand new electrical lines with a brand new uh, surge protector in it, which is obviously some type of EMP shield, really high tech looking. This is Vermont. You don't have anything high tech looking in Vermont. It's a brand new line. And so we didn't have any transformers explode during the storm. But guess what? Maine and New Jersey had transformers explode during the storm. Mark, when have you heard of during hurricanes about transformers exploding? You hear about trees, you know, being knocked down and power lines being blown down, but you don't hear about explosions. And the reason why is this, is this plasma, uh, this plasma air that comes down, it supersizes these storms, okay? So instead of getting an inch of rain, you're getting three and a half inches of rain. Instead of getting 20 mile an hour winds, you're getting 70 mile an hour winds. And then more importantly, this conducts electricity and metal. So when this wind hits the transformer that's metal, it then interacts with the electrical source that is there and kaboom. So that's what's going on. And, you know, talking about uh, black, blacking out California for 10 years, it's just throwing us off the scent. You know what I mean? It's making us think that it has something to do, you know, with uh, some type of long-term thing. And it's not. It's just to throw us off the scent in the short term. Well, as far as, you know, I'd love to hear, you know, <laughs> Uh, I would love to hear some some of these folks come out and tell us, you know, why all of this is going on, and and uh, I would love for them to tell us the truth on what our grid is, uh, what state our grid is in right now, as far as how vulnerable it is and what the real threats are to us. The thing is, is the writing was on the wall before September two thousand one. They knew about it. They they basically told us about it beforehand, and now looking back. There was all these signs in 1997, 98, 99, 2000, and we didn't see it, right? Now they're doing the same kind of thing on all this other stuff. 
you know, what what's going to happen next? For sure. There's no doubt about it. So, I mean, if you want to talk about the origin of PSE and G, who they are, you need to think this way, Mark, okay? If the 1% has all the money, okay, which they do, and the 99% does not, that means that every single one of their businesses that they have, it doesn't necessarily have to earn money. You, you have to stop thinking like these businesses have to earn money. They don't. They can be theaterish. In other words, they can be on the verge of bankruptcy like PSE and G is so they can raise taxes and take more money from you. They cannot make money like Google and Amazon and Tesla because they, they form other purposes. Google watches everything you do with their location services. So the elite, that, that company doesn't have to make money, and it doesn't. On Amazon, it knows everything that you buy and exactly where you get it delivered to, in other words, where you live. That's important information to them. Amazon doesn't make any money. And finally, Tesla, he doesn't make any money. He's just this really cool guy. So they gave him the coolest car that they possibly could have to put it on the market to get all these old men who have to have their fast little cars, get them all excited, you know, get them all hot and bothered, and then use him to propagate their space and going to Mars and all the fake stuff that we've talked about on other times before. So he's just the puppet for that. And they use these companies more for that reason. So let's go back to PSCNG. In 1608 in the United States, there was a charter. 48 Merovingian families were going to build the United States. So they knew there were going to be 48 states to begin with. Each one was going to be a kingdom of these 48 families. What happened? All the infighting happened. It narrowed them down to 13 families. That's why we had 13 colonies. And in 1787, Benjamin Franklin, by charter, gave to the Pacer family, because everything that all the, everything that's been done in history, right, is done in writing, in longhand, and in, in all in script. And in 1787, Benjamin Franklin, by charter, gave the Pacer family, P-E-Y-S-E-U-R, uh, all, uh, all communications generation in the uh, United States forever, and all transportation in the United States forever, okay? And then... They, they enacted a law that said that only, and so the first communication was telegraph and the first transportation was railroad. Then they passed a law that said that the only people that could create electricity were railroads. So by default, the Pacers got all the, all the electrical generation in the United States. And then in the thirties, they lost the, the, they lost all this stuff because of, uh, someone dying and the trust that were associated with it. And it went to a mobster in New Jersey by the last name of close in the fifties. And his daughter was Margaret Cran. His daughter was Mar- Margaret Crandall uh, close. And she was the first federal reserve governor of North Carolina in the sixties. And that's when the federal reserve got those assets. So now let me go back to the railroad Mars. So the railroad had created an organization called the United States Secret Military Railroad Police, okay? And that was the, the organization that would protect the railroads and protect transportation. Changed their name five times, Mark, and today they're known as the Central Intelligence Agency. And guess what? They're owned by the Federal Reserve. That means they're owned by the 13 banking families that did their deeds in 1913 on Jekyll Island. They own it all. And they, 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 and they have, so think of it, all communications, all transportation, all electricity. They own PSE and G. Of course they do. They own all that. They own every car company. They own Tesla. They own GM. They own Ford. Because by charter, by law, they're the only ones that can. And this is in longhand, written in 1787 by Benjamin Franklin. Can I ask, why do you think they uh, are taking out the repeaters, the ham radio repeaters in California? Yeah, because then we can't work together. You heard your first caller. We need to work together, people. Roll up your sleeves and work together. You know, you're, you're, not, you're not Chinese. You're not white. You're not any of these labels that they give you. And, um, you know, Nelson Rockefeller and David Rockefeller in 1967, you know, if we want to go to that sad September day, Marf, I mean, I'll blow your mind away. You want to give me another call in at another time. But by eminent domain, they handpicked the land 
that the World Trade Center was was built on. But everyone everyone talks about the Rothschilds. You forget about the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers created all industry, and they're big pharma. The Rockefellers are big pharma. So Nelson Rockefeller was the governor of New York in 1967. He took that land by eminent domain at a specific spot because through the Washington Arch on the Lower East Side, okay, which was uh, designed after the Arch of Titus, who, who destroyed the Third Temple, that makes the World Trade Center the third, the, the second, I mean, the second temple that makes World Trade the third temple. You can look through the arch and you see the two World Trade Centers there. And it was purposely built that way. And so the, 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 um, the towers themselves were actually DNA markers. They symbolized the 23 chromosomes from the man and the 23 chromosomes from the woman. And the fact they were taken down, two becomes one. The one tower now, basically, that was the start of the beast system when they told us that we don't need men and women anymore to uh, house demons because we can clone and we can, you know, connect to AI and do all those things. That's what they were showing us with that, you know. Uh, I think it's uh, Actus Probot. Uh, it's, it's, it's on the it's on the actual arch itself, but there's pictures and everything. There's a whole satanic ritual that went on that day, and that's why I always say that nothing has changed since 2001. I mean, it's it's, it's the same. It's the you know what I mean. It's the same technology. You just got a few more megapixels in your camera. It's a little sharper. It's the same shows. It's the same like you know epi- you know it's the same what you know uh, Spider Man six, Spider Man seven, you know Avengers twelve. I mean, it's all the same thing. There's nothing new. There's no new music. There's nothing new since 2001. Nothing. Mountain Man, this is so crazy. I, and and by the way, okay, so that's one of the truest statements ever, by the way, is uh, you can clearly see history is repeating itself and people do not understand how true it is because the same things, they can do the same formula in, you know, wait three decades, do the exact same thing and people still don't get it because they distract you with everything else. They can do the same exact mm-hmm. thing. I I, yeah. I just it's yeah. crazy that people don't see it. Uh, Mountain Man, I always love your calls. I appreciate you. Um, also, you know, the the yeah. I just we got to do something. I had, yeah, we will. I had two housekeeping things though, and this one will drive you crazy. You're gonna love it. Okay, so bottom. First of all, I was born at 4:08 a.m. Okay. I think you know that time very well, your young daughter. Um, secondly, in college, because I went to be a broadcaster just like you're doing now, and that's when I figured out that the media was bought and paid for. I worked with Sean McDonough, Mike Tirico, the two Monday Night Football guys, and Greg Popper, the guy that does the Raiders, that guy. And I figured out the media was bought and paid for. My nickname in college was Marv, M-A-R-V. So just change your F to a V. So on my on my website, I created my first ever coupon code, which is twenty five percent off if you put in M A R F Marf, because uh, it's so close to Marv and Marf. So Marf, I have a coupon code for that. And then last thing was your uh, um, what's his face, uh, John? Uh, remember you kept saying I'm this guy. What's his name? Uh, John Malkovich. The, uh, you sound like John Malkovich. Malkovich. Yes. Okay. So here you go. This is going to blow you away. So after that show, I talked to my wife, Lynn, and I mentioned what she said, what you said. And she says, well, do you realize that he was your neighbor? And I was like, what? So I lived in Southern Connecticut and he lived in the town next to me during the time that I lived there unbeknownst to me. And this is the nineties. So we didn't have cell phones then. So he had an answering service. And guess who worked for the answering service? My wife. And guess who was his um, answerer? My wife. No way. <laughs> yes. So you mean he yes. paid? Yes. The, yes. Oh, that's funny. Yes. I found that out after the show. It blew me away. It blew me away. Mountain Man. Anyway, um, I'm showing your. I'm showing your website. Mountain Man does. Uh, well, I, I. We can't. It's very careful about what it is. But he does creams that uh, come from plants that come from Earth. That when you put it on, it's magically better. If you know what I mean, it uh, 